Hello, Bethel family and friends. Pastor Joe here. You know what time it is? It's time for a Bible study. Uh, so I'm glad you've got a little time to spend with me. If you're clicking on, I really appreciate you giving me a few moments of your time where we can just be together, uh, huddle around God's Word, find encouragement from God's Word. And you know, there's just something about digging into your Bible and, and reading and allowing the Holy Spirit to speak to your heart and your soul and your mind. And I know right now we have been in some just um, difficult days, overwhelming days. Uh, I was hearing something new recently in a meeting. Uh, you've heard of post-traumatic stress uh, disorder, PTSD. They've actually labeled another one a CTSD which is Continuous Traumatic Stress Disorder. And so what they're saying is that we're under a lot of stress. The issue is <clears throat> the stress has not ended. <laughs> we're, we're, we're still in it. Uh, it is something that happened a long time ago. It's not something we're anticipating. It's something we're in the middle of. And so maybe today you're stressed out. Maybe there's a lot going on and uh, you're frustrated. Uh, maybe it's a work issue. You're not working. Uh, maybe your work is, environment has changed so drastically. Uh, you're out of your routine. Uh, maybe you're still waiting on your stimulus check. Uh, maybe you're waiting on unemployment. There's a lot of things that are stressing us out. Uh, maybe you're having a tough time just being with your family, and uh, we're, we're learning to be together. Uh, we're learning to not be around other people that maybe we enjoy spending time with. And so in this quick Bible study, and I, I say quick, it'll be a while, but uh, in this little Bible study, we're going to look at Matthew chapter 6, verses 19 through 34. And, and it's going to help us, I believe, as we get into God's Word, uh, it's going to help us to get on target and, and maybe help us to find some focus uh, that we really need. And so right now, I want you to grab your Bible. Uh, whatever translation you enjoy, get it out, study it. Um, I'm going to be using the New Living Translation and use it maybe as a commentary. Uh, get your phone out, get your app up on your phone, you version or Bible Gateway or whatever app you use, and read along with me. So we're going to dig into God's Word. We're going to think about getting on target. And so let's hear God's Word together. Here we are getting on target. So what does God's Word have for us today? Don't store up treasure here on earth where moths eat them and rust destroys them and where thieves break in and steal. Store your treasures in heaven where moths and rust cannot destroy and thieves do not break in and steal. Wherever your treasure is, there your there the desires of your heart will also be. Your eye is like a lamp that provides light for your body. When your eye is healthy, your whole body is filled with light. But when your eye is unhealthy, your whole body is filled with darkness. And if the light you think you have is actually darkness, how deep that darkness is. No one can serve two masters, for you will hate one and love the other. You will be devoted to one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and be enslaved to money. That is why I tell you not to worry about everyday life, whether you have enough food and drink or enough clothes to wear. Isn't life more than food and your body more than clothing? Look at the birds. They don't plant or harvest or store food in barns, for your heavenly Father feeds them. And aren't you far more valuable to Him than they are? Can all your worries add a single moment to your life? And why worry about your clothing? Look at the lilies of the field, how they grow. They don't work or make their clothing. 
Yet Solomon, in all his glory, was not dressed as beautifully as they are. And if God cares so wonderfully for wildflowers that are here today and thrown into the fire tomorrow, he will certainly care for you. Why do you have so little faith? So don't worry about these things, saying, What will we eat? What will we drink? What will we wear? These things dominate the thoughts of unbelievers. But your heavenly Father already knows all your needs. Seek the kingdom of God above all else and live righteously and he will give you everything you need. So don't worry about tomorrow for tomorrow will bring its own worries. Today's trouble is enough for today. Well, that's God's word for us. And so we want to dig in and see what we can learn from God's word to help us. And so today, we're going to think about being on target. And if you think about a target, uh, you think of a bullseye. And isn't that, if you're a marksman, uh, uh, isn't that what you want to hit? Whether you're using a bow, a rifle, or your favorite Colt 45, you want to hit the bullseye. And so we want to be on target. And as we study God's Word, we want to be on target. What we want to do as believers is be focused on what would God have us do? Who would God have us be? And where should we not be? And so let's dig into this, uh, this, this first understanding that we're going to find from God's Word, being on target. We're going to look at the key concept. And so what is the key concept? Well, the key concept is found in verses 19 through 21, and we're going to look at treasure lost. I just read the scripture for you, and so maybe you're thinking about what did the scriptures say And so let's hear it again. Don't store up treasures here on earth where moths eat them and rust destroys them where thieves break in and steal. Treasures lost are the treasures that we invest or place in the wrong place. Well, I shouldn't say this. Don't look at your 401k plans right now. Do not look at your retirement accounts right now. The stock market's been crazy. Now, if you do look, you may be encouraged because uh, the money's coming back. Uh, The stocks are up today. And so be encouraged by that. But we often put too much focus in the wrong place. And so uh, our treasures can be lost. So it really depends on what your treasure is. And so we want to be mindful of that. Treasures can be found. And where do I get this from? Store your treasures in heaven where moths and rust cannot destroy and thieves do not break in and steal. And so what we want to be mindful of is where we place our treasures. Jesus says to us, our treasure will be found if we invest our treasures in the things of God. We're going to think about the kingdom of God, heaven as the goal Uh, of God for his people for eternity. Where are we investing? So let's look at this. Let's think about this a little bit more. You know, it's really about the heart's desire. Hear this again. Wherever your treasure is, there the desires of your heart will also be. Wherever your treasure is, there the desires of your heart, so also be. The heart's desire. What are your heart's desires right now? What is it that you want? Do you want a a huge bank account? Um, You know, I think during COVID-19, you know what I think what what we would treasure right now is health. Uh, Don't we treasure health? Don't we treasure the well-being of our family? Don't we want to know that our families are well and healthy? Well, you know, that's that can't be bought with money, can it? Now, we love our doctors, and I have a great doctor, uh, and we have great health care providers, and I'm so thankful for them. Be in prayer for our health care providers, all those that are on the front lines that are, that are right there where COVID-19 
is is the closest uh, the closest source and and people are having to battle that pray for those folks but what are your heart's desires jesus says to us our heart's desires need to be the things of god and so if you're a believer now okay if you're not a believer that that uh, that doesn't place you in that category. But if you're a believer, if you're someone who has trusted Jesus to be your Savior, uh, your guide, your forgiver, uh, our treasure should be found in the things of God. So if you're a believer, maybe you need to think about what is my heart's desire? Is it the things of God? Is it my desire to please God? Well, what I think the the key concept here is, is getting on target asked the question, what do we treasure? We may have placed too much energy in the wrong places. And so I don't know where you've been focusing your efforts and your energy, uh, what you've been investing in. But you know, if during COVID-19, during these times of stay in place and, and maybe a bit of isolation, if you've been praying more, You've been investing in the kingdom of heaven. Uh, you've been investing in heaven, so to speak. If you've been studying your Bible, if you've been reading the scriptures, you've been investing in the things of God, in the kingdom of God, in the things of heaven. If you've tried to say an encouraging word to a brother or sister in Christ or to those who don't know the Lord yet, if you've tried to share some thoughts and hope from scripture, you've been investing in the kingdom. And so I'm so proud of you. I'm proud of all you're doing to stay focused and uh, to work through the struggles. And we're finding help in God's Word. And so let's continue to move forward. We have just looked at the key concept, which is treasure. So what's the next thing we need to look? Well, I was working with the C's today. And so we move from the key concept to the place of clarity. The place of clarity. And so we want to dig in there. And so I remember uh, being a child or maybe being new in church and hearing this little phrase, Oh, be careful, little eyes, what you see. Oh, be careful, little eyes, what you see. For the Father up above is looking down in love. Oh, be careful, little eyes, what you see. Well, you didn't deserve that, did you? Well, I uh, just wanted to, to sing a little bit, I guess. And so we read in Scripture that our eyes are so important. Where are we placing our eyes? Uh, sometimes, I've heard people say in days gone by, uh, that sometimes if we're so busy looking to heaven, we're so heavenly minded, we're no earthly good. Or sometimes I've heard it said, well, if we're looking so intently on the things of this earth that we're so earthly minded, we're no heavenly good. Well, it begs the fact or speaks to the fact that um, we, where we focus our attention with our eyes is very, very important. So let's hear what Jesus has to say about this. He says, Light reveals, and this is the way he says it. Your eye is like a lamp that provides light for your body. When your eye is healthy, your whole body is filled with light. Now, we know that light in Scripture speaks to truth. It speaks to the things of God. Jesus says himself, I am the light of the world. One of my favorite scriptures is at Christmas is found in Isaiah, and it says those who were walking in deepest, darkest gloom, upon them a light has dawned or shone. A light is shone around them. And so we know Jesus came uh, to earth, and there was a great star above him shedding light on where the Christ child would be. Jesus, again, says he is the light of the world. And so we know that if our eyes are fill of, filled with light, they are filled with the things of God. And so then we see this transition away from light to darkness. And so, again, it said those who are walking in deepest, darkest gloom, upon them a light has shone. Um, so what does the scripture say here? Um, it says, but when your eye is unhealthy, your whole body is filled with darkness. When your eyes are unhealthy, your whole body is filled 
with darkness. And that's a, a discouraging word. And if the light you think you have is actually darkness, how deep that darkness is. And so darkness hides. When we think of in the dark, I don't know, if you were a kid and you used to play hide and seek or play at night, I remember being a little kid playing kick the can in the dark, and sometimes you couldn't see, and you'd be running through the yard, and you'd run into something, or you'd step in a hole. Darkness hides things uh, that are obvious, or would be obvious in the light, that can harm us. And so Jesus starts to talk to us about the darkness. And so he wants us to understand that where we focus our attention is so important. So again, the key concept was treasure, right? And then the place of clarity is where we're looking, what we're doing with our eyes. Are we looking to God or are we not? And so we want to see uh, what we should learn here. And what we learn here is getting on target may take cataract surgery. How well are we seeing? Has our life focus grown dim? Well, you know, I've talked to a lot of people over the years with cataracts, and they talk about how things get darker and darker and darker. And then they have cataract surgery, and something amazing happens. All of a sudden, their eyes work again. Everything is so bright, so vivid, and they get so excited about what they can see. You know, when we're trusting in God, when we're focused on Him, our eyes will truly be open, and we will be able to see the things that God wants us to see. And you know what those things will be? There'll be hope, there'll be encouragement, and there'll be light. They won't be darkness, and we'll be moving in positive ways, positive ways. And so God wants us all to have cataract surgery. Well, this leads us to the next place in Scripture found in verse 24 is the challenge. Now, you may be saying, um, we're talking about treasure, we're talking about focus, uh, we're talking about clarity, and that has to do with our eyes, and all of a sudden, Scripture says you better pick your master. You better pick your master. Well, you probably already picked your master. And so what the scripture is going to teach us, and you may say, well, okay, this is, I remember the scripture, it's a focus on money. Well, yes, but what it's saying is we have to choose what will master us. And I want to say, yes, money can be an issue, but I can say also discouragement can be an issue. Um, looking at negative things can be an issue. And and I've met a lot of people in my life that, that tended to be pessimistic, uh, Eeyores, they only saw the negatives in life. And I have to be careful. We all need to be careful focusing on what's positive or negative. And so if we put too much attention on the things of this world, again, the stock market or illness or, or, or other things that are real, but they can be very negative, where will that take us? It will take us to a negative place. But if we focus our efforts and attention on the living God, we're going to find lots of positives and lots of promises. And so we want to hear what God's Word has to say. We all have a master. And so uh, uh, we, we need to understand that. We need to understand something has our allegiance. And so it says in our scriptures here, No one can serve two masters, for you will hate one and love the other. You will be devoted to one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and be enslaved to money. Well, we need to understand you can't serve two masters. You need to choose one master to serve, and we know who that's supposed to be. That's supposed to be the living God, right? So getting on target leads to serving the living God. We find focus when we find Him, when we give Him our efforts, when we give Him our energy, when we give Him our attention, we will find hope, we will find light, we will find clarity, and we will have true treasure. Did you know God calls us His treasure? Did you know He calls us the apple of His eye? He treasures us. And we should treasure him, for he is truly an incredible treasure chest to open 
of unbound prosperity. And I'm not just saying that financially. I'm saying in all of life, the thief comes to kill, steal, and destroy. But Jesus came that we may have life and have it to the full, that we may have an abundant life. Doesn't that sound a lot better? Well, as we continue to move forward in the scriptures, we need to see the conditions to consider. The conditions to consider. And this is a big chunk of this scripture. And, and what's interesting about studying scripture, this is a Bible study, is the context. And so sometimes we like to pick a, a particular paragraph and the fancy word for those paragraphs in scripture uh, when it's uh, one continuous thought is a pericope. Uh, that's a Kevin Brooks term. But a pericope or a, a, a designated place in scripture where one thought is contained is that we need to look at that whole thought process, that whole place of concept, uh, which is a larger section of scripture to really find out what the writer was sharing and what Jesus wanted us to understand. And so all of this, this idea of the key concept of treasure, of the place of clarity where we place our eyes, the challenge of picking our master is leading us all to this one place. And it's the conditions to consider. The conditions to consider. Well, worry distracts. And six times in this text, and I looked at two different translations, the New King James and the New Living Translation, um, six times this word worry is used. Six times. You think about that. Why would Jesus use that word over and over and over? Don't you think Jesus might be saying to us, <laughs> I know you're worrying right now. And, you know, he wrote this, and there wasn't a COVID-19 uh, at this time, but you know what? There was plenty to worry about. Can I tell you this? There's always been plenty to worry about, and there's always something that will grab our attention, something that will, that will grab us that might become our treasure or our master or the darkness in our eyes, things that will take us away from the things of God. And listen, worry is real. I worry. But Jesus says, don't worry. And so we want to dig in here. And he says, God provides. And so he gives these beautiful illustrations in the scripture about things that we tend to worry about, everyday life, food, drink, clothing, these three things. And he'll say, can you not look around at nature and see that God truly provides? Have you ever thought about how God provides uh, this is a, a, a strange illustration, but you know, my dad's, uh, he's a wise man, and uh, the older I get, the, the more wisdom I see from him, but he, he used to tell me things like, don't worry about that cat. That cat was made to live outside. Now, I know if you're a cat lover today, and you have an indoor cat, you're, you're probably stressing a little bit, uh, but uh, you know, God made animals with fur. And so because they have fur, they have the ability to weather the weather a lot better than we do. Have you, did you ever think about, doesn't God know what he's doing? Isn't it interesting about seasons of harvest, planting leading to seasons of harvest? There's a right time for everything. But in scripture, the one thing we see is that God knows how all this works and he makes it work and God provides what really stood out to me in this is where the scripture says, don't you know that God cares for you, that he cares for you more than he cares for all of these other things. And so sometimes we need to remember that. And aren't you far more valuable to him than they are? Can all your worries add a single moment to your life? Well, God provides, and we need to remember that. And then he throws this out. He really gets us, and he says, um, He will certainly care for you, verse 30. Why do you have so little faith? Well, I'm not here to pick on any of us. <laughs> but, you know, sometimes I don't have the faith that I need because, you know why, I get distracted and I worry. 
Sometimes my treasure ends up being here on earth instead of in heaven. Uh, sometimes my eyes get focused in the wrong direction. Sometimes I forget who my true master is. And then I'm reminded in a good Bible study to dig into God's word. And then I remember, oh, God will take care of me. I can trust him. That's what faith is. It's trust. It's believing in, specifically believing in Jesus and knowing that he will provide for me. Well, focus always wins. And so we are taught here, seek the kingdom of God above all else and live righteously and he will give you everything you need. Let me read that again. Seek the kingdom of God above all else and live righteously. Boy, that's that's a sticking point, isn't it? And he will give you everything you need. Focus on God wins. When we focus, we win with God. So, getting on target comes about by shifting our focus from our present condition to the faithfulness of God with the promise of his word for our care. Well, I got wordy there, but let me let me just say this to us. When we focus on our God, when we take our focus off of the cares of this world, and they're real. I'm not saying they're not real. They are real, and we do have to live in an everyday world. But you know what? When I'm focused on the living God, all of a sudden those mountains go back to being molehills. When I'm overwhelmed by the circumstances and conditions of life, I'm reminded that there is a living God who created the heavens and the earth, who when the children of Israel had escaped bondage in Egypt and spent 40 years in the wilderness, God provided pancakes every morning. Well, some of my friends say it was actually Krispy Kreme donuts. That manna from heaven, the quail that came to offer them meat, water that flowed out of a rock? Can our God provide? You better believe it. Our God can take care of us, and he promised us he would in his word. Again, do you remember that scripture? And aren't you far more valuable to him than they are? Did you know you're valuable to God? He loves you, and he wants to provide for you. He wants to care for your every need. So often we don't see the forest for the trees. Jesus points us to heaven as the goal. Our eyes lead the way and bring us to the point of decision, whom we will serve. The question not asked but answered by Jesus is, why should we serve God? Why should we serve God? Maybe you've been wondering that. And I want to tell you again, because we just studied it in God's word, our God will provide. He will take care of us as we trust in him. He has everything we need. So we're going to seek first his kingdom. We're going to focus on righteousness and live rightly with our God, obeying all the things that Jesus has commanded us. And we're going to remember that he is with us till the very end of the age and then forever more. We'll be quoting scripture like David in the 23rd Psalm. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life and I will dwell in the house of the Lord. How long? Forever. That's how good our God is. I hope this has been a little bit of encouragement to you. Dig into God's Word. Spend some time in God's Word. Hey, thank you for joining me. Special treat coming up. Uh, we've got some new friends at Bethel that are going to be helping me uh, with doing some worship. And so they're going to have some worship for us. I'm going to be recording some of that coming up uh, in a day or so. And we're going to worship together. I'm going to share the Word and so uh, look forward to some, some new things coming. God bless you, and let's just pray together. Father God, we are often overwhelmed. But Lord, you're so much better than our struggle. Uh, you're so much better uh, and offer us so much more hope than our little minds will offer to us or scrounge around to find. We thank you for your word. We thank you for this time we've had today 
to share together in your word. Holy Spirit, come and encourage each of our hearts individually as your word is planted deep within our hearts that even as the psalmist said that I might not sin against you. And so we're blessed, my brothers and sisters. Bless us together. Keep us encouraged as we find you available, real, and present in every moment of our lives. And we will give you all the praise and all the glory for it all. Because, Jesus, we ask in your precious name, and let all my friends in Christ say together, Amen and Amen. God bless you. Have a great day. Have a great week. Hey, spend some time with God in his word.